Welcome back to the Bloomington Breakfast Club. I'm Juliana Mary. And I'm Michael Skiles, and we're here at Da Vinci's Pizza and Pasta on Washington and 3rd Street. Let's go take a look and meet me even a taste. We are here with Mohi Osman, the owner and head chef at Da Vinci's Pizza, the newest pizza place in Bloomington. So, thank you so much for being here with us today. Yes, it's a pleasure having you all here. Yes. We have to know, what was the inspiration for Da Vinci's? Well, Da Vinci is basically an Italian pizza. Everything made from scratch. There's no oil, there's no shortcuts, there's no cheap ingredients. This is a pizza I will have a Rome or Naples. And I think the community here deserves to have such a great product. It's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So we know that you have some kind of unique ingredients on some of the pizzas. Can you tell us about some of the more unique recipes on your menu? I would say one of the most unique ingredients is a truffle paste, mushroom truffle paste, and that comes from Italy. It's a Mino product, which is a top product in Italy. Uh, we use it here for uh, some of the pastas and some of the pizzas. And that's like basically gold in pizza. The cost of our leg, uh, the end products is perfect. Would you say that that's your favorite pizza or what's the one you recommend the most? I, I would do recommend the truffle mm -hmm. pizza, but any, any item we have in the menu, honestly, is 10 out of 10. We give 100% of anything we do. And make and make sure we use the best ingredients and we do it as well. That's awesome. We also know you have a honey pizza. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came up with that? Well, uh, we have hot honey with pera pizza. Sweet and salty. It always gives that great flavor, great cake. And by adding to it a little bit of hot honey, which would make it sweet, salty, and hot. And that three together are actually in the product of pasta. It's called Pera Pizza. And it has some pesto sauce in it as well. I've had it, it's really Very good. Very good, yeah. 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 Okay. What's your um, most popular item on the menu? I would say the truffle pizza is one of the best sellers. Um, farmers have made product, meatballs are awesome. That's are like basically the street top seller. And why did you decide to come and put this restaurant in Bloomington specifically? Well, I have before this restaurant, I have I own nine different restaurants. A lot of them are Italian, Egyptian, and in Italy, last couple of years, we've been having a lot of hard time finding employees. The employee market is tough, so I decided to come here, college students are smart, they're hard worker, and they want to make more money. So it's a win-win situation. Very true. Very true. All right, well, we're going to go back in the kitchen and find out what makes Da Vinci so great. Absolutely. Now, we are behind the scenes in the kitchen of Da Vinci's, and we're going to see how some pizza's made. Absolutely, yeah. Follow me, follow us. Well, big oven here. Yeah, before the oven, oven. it <laughs> all start with that the flour. Okay. Since 1924, this is the best miller in Naples, Italy. And that flour is top products in the world. To do a Napolitano style pizza, you have to use the double zero Napolitano caputo flour. And I'm gonna start showing you guys how we make the pizza. Okay. 
of the remix flower with your three ingredients. A put of flour, salt, and water. And that's it. That's all. That's all what we that's use. That's all that you put in there. Yep. We're not like wow. the average show using oil or shortening and all of that stuff. This is a really healthy meat. All right. That's we're what I like have, to hear. <laughs> yep. We're going to do the truffle pot guy. The truffle. Oh, this is the one that you recommended, right? That's right. Yes. You guys can wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> wow. Seconds. So basically, two minutes, your pizza is ready to go. fresh yes. out of that awesome oven that he has, but it's... Oh my gosh. It's like, it's not even pizza. This is not like the no. normal, like greasy pizza. It's like very, like natural. Like you can yeah. tell all the products are If you like mushrooms quality. at all, it just, at all. I this is love mushrooms. Like this is, this is every mushroom lover's dream, every pizza lover's dream. And I mean, honestly, and apparently it's healthy too. The yeah. woman does it, so. The best of both worlds. crazy, yeah, honestly. You can find me here the rest of the day, so. <laughs> and now it's time for our unnecessary updates for all things you need to know pop culture news. Michael, what did you find for us? Well, I got a pretty interesting bit of information. The Jonas Brothers are gonna be on the Coors Light bottle now. 
That is a random, very random duo for me, I feel like. The co-branding there is very interesting because I feel like most of their audience can't drink. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't understand what the target audience is there, but wasn't there like a whole course promotion at one of their weddings, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. But see, you know, we're kind of almost on the cost part. Because when I was a kid, I loved the Jonas Brothers. The year 3000 was my jam. <laughs> so, so, you know, the fact that now they're yeah. going to light bulb or a bottle, you're I'm going right, to be turning 21 right. this winter. So, I right. mean, maybe. Maybe like their audience is like growing up and this is like part of that, but it'll be definitely interesting to see like how Disney and, like reacts to that. Yeah, but sure. we'll see. Cool. So, in other news, mm -hmm. JoJo has ba babysat Northwest. Mm -hmm. And apparently, Northwest, like on part of the episode totally like exposed her mom um, Kim for like saying that Jojo like screams a lot or like it's kind of like loud or like kind of alluding to the fact that she's like kind of annoying and um, I just think that's so funny like what an interesting collab like between the two was it featured on the Kardashian show or was it on a reality show I think I it was on both I think it was on both like keeping up with the Kardashians mentioned okay. it and then okay. I think it was also on Jojo's YouTube channel okay. but I don't know, the whole JoJo thing, I really don't understand. Maybe I'm not her like target audience, but I just feel like very confused. Right, she's on, got like, a what lot of bows. Yeah, she's and really her hair, like, like, like rainbows, like rainbows, something with rainbows. Yeah, she's really into that. And you know, it'd be really funny to see how Northwest interacts with her. Yes. Because Northwest reacting with caretakers, it's entertaining. Right, it's I mean, I just think it's gonna be interesting to see like where Northwest goes in general. And I know her mom has come out and said that like, this was her decision to go and participate in this like promotional thing with Jojo so I think it'll be interesting to see where her career goes from there right I, we'll see well in other words it's also also kind of you know toddler related in a way <laughs> um, this one's about Sesame Street we have a new character coming on to the show her name is Carly and she will be addressing the issues of a mother with an opioid addiction so. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely very like current with a lot of our like current events going on right now, and I think it's interesting that they're like Sesame Street is taking such a stance on it. And I mean, I don't know. I'm really interested to see. I just kind of wonder how a kid can really grasp like you know the uh, right the intensity of an op opioid addiction. I almost feel like yeah. Sesame Street is running out of stuff to really teach kids. But if it makes them right. more. Uh, more, I guess, worldly, and it gives them more knowledge and tells them more about the world. Who knows? It could help a little girl out there. Right. It could be They're like relevant. Boy. I feel like and with the times, like I just feel like it is important to at least address these things. And Sesame Street could be on to something with that. But and finally, I found that Liam Hemsworth mm -hmm. went on a date with Madison Brown from Dynasty after you know his broke off um, with Miley. Really? Yes. Okay, and wow. Miley's dating Cody Simpson. Wow, that's so, a lot of drama. It I know, like it is. And I, I still there. just, I don't know, I really mm -hmm. love their relationship, so it is kind of sad to see. They had a whole movie, but, right? was it that? Yes, was yeah, the movie? right, and it was Miley like Cyrus it like, came movie. true or whatever, yeah. Oh. And I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what comes of this. I wonder if it was just a date, like a one-time thing, but it's very heavily publicized, mm -hmm. so we will see. Let's see where it goes. Now we're going to take a look at our newest segment of Jack on the Street with our correspondent, Jack Bassett, who checked out the Fall Festival at Oliver Winery. Let's take a look. Grapes. Plus barrels. Plus feet equal wine, right? Well, sort of. Here at Oliver Winery in Bloomington, the Oliver team is getting people in the fall spirit with weekend celebrations starting with an old-fashioned wine-stopping competition. Twelve teams aged 21 and above competed in action, all for the prize of a hot air balloon ride with Oliver Winery founder Bill Oliver. These teams had one goal in mind, to stop out the competition, both literally and figuratively, by stomping the most grapes in order to get the heaviest weight of stomp grape puree. And boy did they mean business. Each team appeared to have their own strategies, including 2017 Oliver Wine Stomping Champions, Zenit to win it. We have a very strategic approach to our grape stomping. 
First, we go in with our national champion soccer player. It's all about the quick, quick feet. Quick feet, quick feet, quick feet. Yep. Then we follow it up with the large man, the big Size guy 15, inside. Bull in a china shop. Bull in a china, china, china shop. Just go on at it. And then the delicate ones, the women. We come in and we just wash it around. Mold. We get it through. Down in there. And that's it. That's how we win. The Zena to win its team's game plan allowed them to shine bright, advancing them all the way to the final round with a total weight of 32 pounds worth of juice. But right on their tails is a team that includes a former IU basketball star, Johnny Yeager. All right, our name is uh, Achieving Greatness, and uh, for today's event, you know, we're really going to be the anchors. We're going to try to stomp as many as we can, as fast as we, as we can. We're going to have the ladies kind of move it around, get in the holes, and uh, just go as hard as we can. So if you have anything to add, yeah, I would just reiterate the fact that we're going with the two-prog attack. We're going with the, the high high knees boys right here, and with our with our ladies over here just smushing that in the holes as much as we can. You know, we're really taking this seriously, and uh, we're excited to be here. The athleticism of achieving greatness has also propelled this team to the final round of competition with a total weight of 33 pounds of grape goodness. With only one spot left in the finals, with a hot air balloon ride on the line, team by team entered their barrels with feisty feet, with a strong sense of competitiveness, but yet all while having fun on a sunny fall day with grapes between their toes. Fighting for that last spot includes a group of rookies making their Oliver foot stopping debut. All right, this is the Loose Tannins at the Oliver Winery. This is our team, Forrest, Caitlin, and Jacqueline. And we have some big strategy today to, to win this. We're having the heavier people, heavier people, are going first, heaviest to lightest. <laughs> Would you like to add anything? I think that's it. I think we're going to just sound fast and hard and heavy. Yeah, basically we're going to have our, our two heavyweights go first, and then Caitlin and I, we run marathons over here, so we're going to go third and fourth and try to bring them home you, with our <laughs> marathon legs, and that's basically our strategy. With the anticipation of a packed patio waiting for a winner to be declared, People waited for the final weights of the juice to be measured with anticipation by sipping wine, listening to good old music, and enjoying the fall day in B-Town. The loose cannons may have taken home the gold, but happiness still struck out throughout the beautiful grounds of Oliver, as even children were given the opportunity to get their stomp on. Line by line, every child in attendance got the opportunity to get their feet wet and grind down some grapes of their own. Grape stopping was fun. That's all I have to say. And, and, and it felt like mushy baby food. Yes, it felt like mushy baby food and it felt like puke. It was disgusting. <laughs> Oliver Winery wants everyone to embrace the feeling of being as happy as a child by having people plan a visit to them this fall, seeking their beautiful location out, and participating in one of their many unique opportunities. We invite everybody to come out for our Sunday fun days. We're gonna have live music every Saturday out on the patio and Sunday. Uh, we just had our grape song competition. Uh, the winners were the Loose Tannins. Uh, they did a great job. We just ended with uh, some kids uh, stomping grapes just for a little fun of it. We've got the Indiana Boys playing and the Big Cheese serving up some nice cheesy uh, delightfulness. We also have coming up popcorn and wine tasting, so we actually partnered with Popcorn uh, Kernels of the Twist. It's a, it's a local lady who mixes uh, our apple pie wine and our ginger apple fizz and makes delicious uh, popcorn flavors, and we're gonna actually be pairing that with our delicious wine. Every weekend we invite you to come out. We always have uh, wine tasting. It's only $5, you get to taste eight of our wines. We have over 40 wines to choose from, and we also offer complimentary tours every 30 minutes um, to see behind the scenes and how we make our delicious wines. So come on out until the end of October. We've got a lot of fun coming up and just check out our website. This fall, grab a bottle of Moscato, a cheese plate or two, and sit back and unwind here at this gorgeous Bloomington gem. For the Bloomington Breakfast Club, reporting from wine country, I'm Jack Bassett. Thank you so much, Jack. 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 Thank you so much, Jack.
they did foot stomps in there, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was really cool. You can see people's feet make the wine you're drinking. Okay. Well, dare, dare I say, I think I might prefer this over, you know, foot wine. But well, it doesn't taste like feet, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers to another great episode of the Linux Breakfast Club. Tune in every Monday.